Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Honasa Consumer Limited Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Kotak Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jay Doshi from Kotak Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Rico. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Kotak Institutional Equities, I welcome you all to FOCU FI24 earnings conference call of NASA Consumer. We have with us Mr. Varun Alag, co-founder, chairman, and CEO. Ms. Gazal Alag, co-founder, and Chief Innovation Officer, and Mr. Raman Prit Sohi, Chief Financial Officer. I'll now hand over the call to Varun for opening remarks. Over to you, Varun. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Jay. Hello, everyone. Good evening to all of you. Um, we welcome you to the quarterly performance update and FI24 update as well for the NASA consumer. Uh, like uh, Jay mentioned, um, we have with us uh, Gazal, uh, Raman, um, as well as Mohit, who leads the associations uh, um, from, from our team uh, as part of this call. And, um, the way we have structured this is we have a, a quick presentation um, in which, uh, um, you know, for the purpose of simplicity, I will take you through uh, what uh, have been the highlights for the quarter, and, uh, and we will open up for questions uh, um, post that. And, uh, so without further ado, let me just uh, jump in and talk about the highlights for the quarter. Um, uh, to start with, um, of course, uh, the quarter has been uh, uh, quarter shaped up really well. While there has been a lot of conversation of uh, uh, you know consumption slowdown, on our side, consumer continues to deliver strong growth. Uh, we have delivered 23 percent like like growth uh, with the underlying uh, volume growth of 27 percent. Um, with a bit of 7% right, and the highest ever quarterly profit of uh, 30 crores. Um, uh, we've also generated 80 crores of free cash in this quarter. At a FY24 level, you know, uh, we have grown uh, at about 31.5% like to like. And, um, our EBITDA is about 7.1%. For the full year, we have generated 111 crores uh, in fact. And, um, and uh, from a UVG perspective, we have grown 41%, which is significantly ahead of our value growth. Um, and uh, we have generated free cash of 224 crores this year. Um, and this year, um, like we have mentioned in the past, we, uh, we've demonstrated a significant improvement over last year in terms of our bottom lines. Uh, last year, Q4, we had a negative EBITDA. Uh, from there, we have moved to a 7% EBITDA this quarter. And last year, for full year, we had a 1.5% EBITDA, uh, to which we have moved to a 7.1% and, uh, for full year this year. And, uh, and our, uh, uh, this, is, this is driven by a combination of uh, um, efficiencies in uh, ANP, OPEX leverage, and other costs, and, which we continue to work on and to make our business more efficient by not compromising on building our brands and taking share. Uh, coming to uh, the core business updates, and, uh, I think let me start by talking about a project which we have been executing and talking about uh, um, in the last couple of quarters as well. You know, um, we clearly realize that uh, omni-channel distribution and offline distribution is going to be a critical part of how we build this company and capture the beauty and just care uh, market share. You know, uh, and in that regard, we started uh, the journey of building this channel about four years back. You know, um, when we started this, we were largely an online company, you know, uh, whereby we only had um, you know, two uh, locations for um, distributing our products to warehouses. You know, um, and uh, we did not have any offline business, you know, because of which we had to go in for a distribution uh, infrastructure where we had super stockists which acted as bus breakers. You know, and then the super stock is appointed uh, distributors you know, um, whose quality was not as good as we would have liked them to be from an SMCG perspective. You know, and hence we have taken this project you know, uh, to 
create a stronger direct distribution uh, infrastructure with strong visibility uh, in technology implementation. As a part of this, there are three pillars that uh, we've, we've been executing. One is a transition from super stockists to direct distributors, especially in top 50 cities, to uh, onboarding high quality FMCG distributors with strong uh, direct distribution reach, to, uh, as well as um, implementing a customized version of PMS and um, SFA, uh, which is a distribution management system and Salesforce automation system that we have built over the last one year uh, along with our customers and across all of these distributors. We, we started this journey in Q3 of FY24. And in Q4 FY24, we have expedited this journey uh, and made sure that their execution is up and live across the top 10 cities. And, um, and over the next three quarters, we will continue to uh, execute this project. And, um, this has had uh, a primary uh, impact in uh, on our on our sort of uh, growth for last quarter and by about 200 basis points. You know, uh, and we do expect some of that impact to continue over the next three quarters. And this, but given it is a great move from a long term perspective, as well as a financially even move given super stock is to contribute to a 5% extra cost of distribution. You know, uh, we are actively transitioning. You know, um, but the good thing is that uh, from a consumption and optics perspective, you know, our brands continue to do very well. You know, our mama works, uh, uh, if you look at the Euro Monitor, uh, 2023 data now for the calendar year 23, it has grown amongst the, as the fastest brand amongst the top 15 DPC brands uh, in the country. Where average, the top 15 DPC brands have grown by 7%, while Mama Earth has grown at 21% according to Euro Monitor ATM data. This is also visible in the AC Nielsen shares uh, that we capture. And according to Nielsen, we have gained 120 basis points in face wash category last year. And we have gained 40 basis points in the shampoo battery last year. And even heartening news is that in the training stores you know, where we are present, uh, share among handlers has actually gone up uh, even faster. So 150 basis points increase in share among handlers for face wash, you know, and 65 basis points increase in shampoo you know, uh, with a gain in distribution as well. You know. So Mama Earth continues to um, be loved by consumers and continues to drive those transactions in core categories across uh, core markets. And, um, and of course, uh, this year we've been also able to demonstrate our ability um, to uh, to build large size brands outside of Mamas. And uh, the Dermaco uh, has hit ARR of 500 crores last quarter um, while being profitable. And, um, and uh, this is the net sales value ARR in terms of GMV, this will be close to 900 crores. Uh, and this is just in four years. We launched the brand in March 20. Um, this is also a brand which, which which is shaping a new proposition, which is the uh, active proposition and that we were able to recognize very early and, um, and launch the right categories with the right mix, and, uh, which is which is been loved by consumers and, and demonstrates our potential um, to build uh, large scale brands in new and evolving propositions. Um, looking at the portfolio, clearly the house of brands that we have, you know, uh, we are very excited to to see the opportunities and possibilities uh, in those brands. And over the next three, three to five years, we do believe um, Dermaco will enter a thousand crore club, uh, Apologica and Optishare will enter five hundred crore clubs, and we should enter a two hundred fifty crore club. And this whole house of brand strategy you know, is also helping us dominate a few categories. And, um, and I would like to take an example of a category like sunscreen, and, which is a category which is also growing really fast. And, but as Monasa, we have been able to use the power of house of brands and, to provide different kind of differentiated proposition in this category, and, uh, whereby there is a made safe natural proposition in Mama or uh, an acid based proposition in Dermaco, a hydrating lightweight proposition in Aphrologica, and a bioactive proposition in Dr. Share. And the combination of this has led to us being able to gain more than 30% market share in Vanasa uh, across the e commerce platforms that we're present in. And now we're going to use the same strategy to get into modern trading and offline and to capture this market. This is evident in the ranks that you see on most of the uh, channels like Amazon. 
Amazon and Micah, where uh, amongst the top five, um, at least three ranks are held by our brands. Right? Um, and that's something which we are going to demonstrate in different categories over time as well. Um, our focus on R&D and innovation, of course, continues to be loved by consumers. This is, this is at the heart of the organization, being able to understand the consumer needs and, um, and using our understanding of the Indian skin, Indian weather, being able to craft the right kind of products and which, uh, which, which then are loved by consumers. They continue to be on that path last quarter as well and long term. Very exciting um, launches, right, which includes uh, liquid chains from Amor, the new um, sunscreen VIS from Amor, and a new technology in sunscreens, whereby long lasting sunscreens, which have six hours, uh, say, uh, which is in future, right, are, are a few of the things that we've launched last year, um, last quarter. And, and NPD has contributed about 18% uh, to the FI 24 revenue to operations. Uh, we also use this strength and to get into newer categories and hence enhance the TAM uh, that is available to the company. And, uh, with Mama Arts, we have entered into personal wash in, with a differentiating product, which is moisturizing lotion soaps, and, um, a grade one made certified uh, formula, and, uh, which is something that we are executing this summer. And, um, and also looking at the opportunity uh, in color cosmetic space, and, uh, we have uh, entered uh, um, into that uh, area with a different brand called Scale, and which is focused at Gen Z, and um, again providing innovative products. We have Clean One lipstick that we have launched on the sales, and which actually has three shades in one lipstick. And, uh, this is actually a new to world innovation that we've brought to India, and knowing that Indian consumers seek value uh, in products with new cats. And we've also launched Tubing Mascara, which is another innovation uh, that we've brought in this category. And, um, and to further strengthen our R&D uh, and, and our uh, product development expertise, and, uh, we are glad to announce the acquisition of Cosmogenesis Labs. And, uh, this acquisition brings in um, you know, uh, the, the uh, expertise of uh, um, Ms. Rohini Manoj, who has been the founder of this uh, company for the last uh, uh, 25 years and uh, brings in very strong and that experience in the very formations. So she and her team uh, has uh, have built more than 5,000 formulations in the beauty and personal category uh, over the over the last few decades. And, uh, another part of the transaction, we'll also be acquiring, uh, apart from the formulation expertise, the R&D lab as well as uh, nano manufacturing facility. Uh, um, this is uh, this is something that further strengthens our ability to uh, innovate. In, uh, and bring the right kind of products to uh, to the consumers. And, uh, Rohini will be joining us as uh, uh, VP of R&D uh, reporting department. And this deal is likely to be closed in the next four to six weeks. Um, and of course, while the business has been good, we have, we've also been spreading a lot of goodness. And uh, we have released our uh, uh, in first impact assessment report, and whereby all the um, brands um, and, and the impact that their purpose um, programs have had has been captured. And, uh, for example, for Mama Earth, uh, over 600,000 trees have been planted across 3,800 acres of land which has been green. And, uh, uh, these are all fruit trees which we plant alongside farmers. So these will generate 12,000 tons of fruit in, uh, uh, over the next decade and uh, about 20 crores uh, in income for these farmers. And, uh, and of course, 500,000 tons of oxygen uh, to the environment will be generated because of this. So, um, our our uh, Dermo program, the Young Scientists program, whereby we have done multiple science classes in uh, schools across Bangalore and Chennai, and more than 20,000 students have been engaged. And, um, basic quiz, we have understood that their knowledge has been improved by 40%. Uh, in Aquologica, it is a younger brand, but we are deploying fresh water um, um, plants. Uh, across villages, and um, we have now deployed it across 500 plus households with access to this, and uh, saving 400 hours daily for women who had to travel hours to get access to uh, fresh clean drinking water. And, and under these are China Academy, and, uh, we've now certified over 10,000 uh, women in salon uh, and styling courses and across 11 states. And, um, this is 
something very close to our heart. And, and as our brands grow, and our, our impact also grows. And, uh, with this, I would come to the floor uh, of our presentation. And, uh, thank you so much for listening. We would love to uh, answer the questions that you have. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Deeraj Mistri from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, and very congratulations on good sets of number and improvement in profitability. So my first question is on distribution expansion, which you are a uh, distribution expansion strategy, what you have implemented. Uh, what kind of impact we are seeing in the short term and what are the likely benefit like what kind of margin creative it can be over the long term periods let's say from two to three years period hi thank you for asking the question um so firstly i think in the short term the impact that we are seeing is in uh, our primary sales which is what i talked about for example last quarter uh, about 200 basis points uh, in, in primary sales uh, is in fact over the next uh, three quarters, we believe 50 to 100 basis points every quarter will be the impact on uh, of this right? because the transition involves reducing inventory, which is there in the system, even the super stock is only a higher level inventory compared to direct stocks. Uh, from a long term perspective, and it is, of course, beneficial from three ways. And um, one, like you rightly said, uh, the super stock is less and um, is, is charges about 5% incrementally in distribution. You know, um, it, uh, it is currently uh, at about 50% uh, level that we end uh, this, this quarter um, and our objective will be to take it down to 30% levels over the next two quarters. You know, uh, and hence that's the, that's the financial benefit. But more importantly, the benefit is in increasing direct distribution and quality of execution in the market. Um, any store which is um, covered well by a direct distributor where frequency of visit is also proper leads to an even better um, share gain compared to what is captured by indirect distribution. Um, and that's the business benefit that we are expecting uh, to see um, over time because of uh, going direct and building uh, these direct distribution. Got it, got it. And uh, as per your current uh, sales, uh, this 50 cities would be contributing what percentage of your sales? About uh, about two thirds uh, of uh, the GT sales is contributed by 50 cities. Two thirds. And uh, yeah, second question is, uh, what would be the contribution of offline channel and online channel during the quarter and for the year, full year? Yeah, so uh, at, at an overall level, uh, offline contribution is about 25 percent, uh, and online, of course, is the balance. Twenty-five percent. I heard correctly. Got it, got it. And this is uh, same for the full year as well. Yes, yes. This is full year. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, how do we see that the margin trajectory in terms of so uh, ENT spend is definitely one of the lever which we can always play for the margin expansion. 
uh, how do we see that the ENP spend uh, when we are focusing much more aggressive growth for Aqualogica, the Dermaco and all, as a percentage of sales, what, uh, when you would like to start playing lever of uh, reducing ENP spend for margin improvement? We've already been doing that actively over the last three years. I mean, uh, so, for example, in case of Walmart, it is significantly over compared to uh, what it was for younger brands. Now, this year, for example, for Adamaco, it has come down as the brand has scaled. Um, and every year, the objective will be to get better efficiencies while continuing to grow and build the uh, younger brands. That's it. Good. Okay, I will come back in a few minutes if any question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivek Maheshwari from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, Varun and team. Um, a few questions. First is, uh, Varun, what is the outlook on FI25, uh, let's say, both on growth and margins? So I think as we have uh, also mentioned in the past, I mean, our objective will be to uh, continue to grow at 20% uh, plus uh, CAG over the next three years. And that's the, uh, that's the growth that we would want to hit in FI25 as well. And that's the plan that we have in place. I and mean, from a margin perspective, our objective will be uh, to improve compared to last year. I mean, at least by about 150 basis points is what we are uh, aiming um, in FI25 in terms of improvement over FI25. Got it. And, you know, in that context, uh, you know, we are hearing a lot about, uh, so I think D2C competition, digital first competition was always there, but we are hearing even the traditional companies are focusing quite a bit on uh, on the online side of things. Uh, uh, the, have you seen competitive activity picking up quite a bit uh, in the in the last three, four months? Uh, uh, and uh, how does that, uh, you know, impact both, uh, you know, from a growth and margin standpoint in the, at least in the near term? So we, we we actually had talked about this last time as well that we have seen incumbents uh, uh, being more competitive, more uh, uh, more competition from incumbents on the uh, online space, and uh, it is largely in the form of uh, significantly higher discounting that uh, we have been noticing. So in, uh, um, that's it. This is a category where the consumer beyond a certain level uh, chooses brands that they love. And, uh, um, and and uh, you know you cannot skew uh, too much beyond a certain level basis uh, price and because of which we feel confident that even in face of cost of competition I mean, we will be able to deliver the goals that we have set for ourselves. Interesting. Uh, the other question is on stays. So, look, you are entering into new categories, uh, and this one is along with the brand. Do you think so? Category-wise, I'm guessing that you know you will keep uh, you know you will keep exploring more uh, uh, white spaces. But from a brand standpoint, do you think the architecture is in place uh, that you know whichever category that you want to get into, uh, you have the architecture, or you still think that there are white spaces and you may have to have uh, uh, you know a couple of more brands? How do you think about that? I think the way, the, the way we are thinking about this is the market in, in uh, you know, Indian consumer is evolving very quickly. In the, uh, in the past, we used to talk about that something, you know, that happens in the U.S. or other countries, it takes about five years for it to sort of, you know, come to India. And, uh, and hence, you know, the category evolution in India is slower. Um, now, this digital evolution in the Indian consumer is becoming very connected. Um, and they are also looking at what's happening outside the world. They are getting educated far more quickly, and compared to what used to be the scenario in the past, where category education used to take a lot of time. Now, with influencers and digital availability, the category education is also becoming quick. Uh, and trends are getting um, captured very quickly. And Dermaco is a great example of that. Um, that you know, nothing existed, and now there is uh, so much action happening in the active base band. So. I think as a company, and we would want to keep a very close watch on our consumers. And we would want to um, clearly see what kind of trends are emerging and 
what kind of needs are emerging and how they are looking at um, different uh, categories of spaces and if there is an opportunity to disrupt and, and that disruption cannot be done by one of our existing brands because of the because of the sharpness or architecture required to do it and if, uh, then we would surely look at uh, new brands to cater to that and if, because we have proven our ability to create value by building a uh, new land Okay, got it, got it. Uh, and if I may, you know, a couple of more. One is on the acquisition, uh, you know, this R&D capability, uh, Cosmogenesis. Can you just elaborate, you know, you mentioned, but the comments were a bit brief. Uh, can you just elaborate, Varun, what is, what is uh, you know, from a capability standpoint, what is the outcome that you are looking at uh, with this acquisition? So, uh, 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 Vivek, as we have mentioned, the innovation, uh, is uh, is critical to the company, um, and um, you know uh, one of the things that we can tie in is the fact that we are a company which is crafting for Indian consumers, for Indian red off, and um, and we were we were seeking to further strengthen our product development expertise. And we of course currently have a team of over 50 members in our uh, innovation and R&D functions, and, uh, but we wanted to further strengthen our expertise in the crafting for India, um, you know, domain by by bringing in uh, a team who has been developing formulations for Indian consumers and Indian brands uh, for some time. So I think the expectation is to further um, improve and work on the products that we have to uh, to increase the acceptance and love amongst consumers, to further enhance our um, understanding of, uh, of of how to draft for India even better in, across our newer brands, and, uh, as well as uh, the purpose uh, would be to to further uh, increase uh, the pace and quality at which the company is able to do. Okay, got it. And the last one, Varun, is this uh, the uh, the this direct distribution, uh, you know, changeover. The, you have quantified its impact on top line. Does it also have any impact on the at the EBITDA level? Um, no significant impact, uh, Vivek. And um, we have uh, uh, taken uh, some increased uh, provisions uh, uh, for inventory. Uh, based on the return stock, uh, you know that that uh, comes in in, in case of conditions. And uh, but the impact is uh, uh, in in you know uh, in uh, less than fifty days. Yeah, in fact, uh, just to add there, Vic, uh, you know, like Mara mentioned earlier, uh, as we move more towards direct distribution, we'll unlock uh, some bit uh, uh, from super stockist uh, margin. So it will balance for the year. So we we don't see any incremental impact to our targets of incremental margins from here. Right. So, Raman, my question was for this quarter. Does this have a, any, uh, you know, any any one-off to call uh, call out in this quarter from a margin standpoint? For the, oh, sorry. So, so, so for, for the current quarter, I think uh, we would have expected a little more leverage to be taken, uh, given that we had, uh, uh, we had some impact on the primary, uh, uh, like you mentioned earlier. So, so there were some leverage impacts even uh, as a percentage of sale of the business because we had a lower primary as compared to what we could have uh, actually delivered. Got it, got it. Perfect. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Percy from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Varun, Raman, and team. Uh, uh, my first question is on uh, Mama Earth. So if I do some back calculation, it seems that uh, Mama Earth's uh, brand at a net sales level uh, has probably grown in single digits uh, uh, this uh, year, uh, partially because of uh, your primary uh, reduction or any other reasons. Uh, just wanted to know your uh, sort of realistic estimates for growth on this brand uh, uh, next year and in FI26. Uh, do you uh, uh, feel that it is a realistic uh, target uh, for us analysts and investors to sort of build in a double-digit uh, growth in the Mama's brand? And uh, if so, what are the pluses and minuses 
to the number versus what we have done this quarter so uh, sorry this year so what will accelerate it uh, uh, from this year uh, what are the factors for the acceleration and if there are any uh, uh, sort of decelerating factors which are not there this year and will come through next year if you can en enumerate that also the pluses and minuses um hi thank you for asking that um so um, you correct there has been on the primary impact which has been there in this um is all on mamar because that's the brand which is distributed offline right um over the last few quarters right um you know from a uh, from a last year perspective when right? um the ubg growth we talked about um you know last year in byte we were in double digit growth right from a last full year perspective the brand is at a um mid teens ubg growth right? uh, in fy24 in fy25.6 and um our plan is to make sure that the brand grows in double digit in terms of value growth and right? as the company growth uh, is about to be seen in drama so so just help me understand if the uvg growth is around uh, 15 what is the reason that the value growth uh, this year is uh, probably a little shy of 10 so between uvg and value growth and um, the one big driver is because of the transition uh um, between b2b and b2c channels and uh, in b2b uh, b2c channels and the per unit revenue recognition is far higher and uh, while in b2b channels because of the margin is set on top and the per unit revenue recognition is relatively lower and uh, and hence the brand is moving towards uh, b2b in the in the growth is coming from gt and modern trend and uh, um there is no number of units which are uh, required as well to uh, deliver the same um, you know amount of revenue growth and so which is the biggest uh, uh, reason to think the gap in the energy in the energy understood understood but won't this headwind continue into next year as well and uh, uh, would you see a scenario where even next year you have a double digit uvg but then the value growth again falls short of 10 um the other uh, thing that you mentioned for example the impact of um, uh, deceleration in primary right which is there in the distribution uh, piece you know um almost 50% of that is done in the last two quarters and over the next three quarters the balance should come in right but once that is done and this, um then that deceleration impact should move away you know um and which gives us confidence that over the next two years we should be able to uh do a double digit value target got it got it uh, another question i had was on margin so you mentioned that you would be targeting somewhere maybe around 8 and 1/2 to 9% uh, uh for fy25 uh my question is and sorry if i'm splitting hairs here but do you think uh, uh, uh it will sort of gradually ramp up uh, over the four quarters or do you think that uh, uh, uh for all the four quarters the Eight and a half to nine percent target would be roughly uh, uh, sort of there across all four quarters. Or do you like start off at seven percent and end up at like ten uh, percent, and therefore the average comes at somewhere around eight and a half to nine? I I do agree on the splitting here, but <laughs> no. So uh, you know, I, I, my view would be that you know we would we would be in a range in a. Um, we would add those the fifty basis points here and there, and um, you know, in terms of quarterly sort of you know averages. So, you know, there are quarters uh, in our case which are uh, more seasonal quarters, and hence our media plans are skewed slightly more on those quarters. You know, uh, we like to also start strong because of summer season and before summer category. You know, but overall, from a year perspective, you know, I believe the variance would be in that fifty seventy basis points mark. Got it. Got it. Got it. And last question, if I may, on Damaco. So, how do you measure the relevant market share for Damaco? See, the overall skincare space is like really huge, right? But uh, that's not your relevant uh, uh, target. Uh, so, maybe uh, uh, the relevant market share would be that 
out of all the brands which are active based uh, brands what is your market share there so do you look at it that way and if so can you give us some idea how big you are relative to that uh, uh, relevant market and also that relevant market which is active based uh, sort of solutions what is the industry growth of that uh, sub segment of skin care um so actually we we be able to give you a directional report on that because there is no third party which measures um you know these these propositions and these brands and given most of this growth of the proposition right the almost in fact 90% contribution of this proposition which is active based is actually lying in online and uh, there is no share um you know um, based uh, a panel is there is some sort but Giving you a directional view, and our view is that this uh, this subcategory is already about you know two uh, thousand odd crores in ARR, you know, um, and of which in um, Dermaco and Doctor Shet between the two of them, and uh, we have about thirty uh, three to thirty five percent odd shares, in, which largely uh, lies in. uh two core categories uh, that is face creams and uh face uh, um some things and uh, and now we are also seeing face washes and moisturizers um grow very strongly in this proposition so that will be uh, that will be another driver i think overall this proposition you know, has gone largely from zero to 2000 crore between the year 2000 and 2024 you know, um and um, you know the, the growth continue to be very strong for for uh, the stock is in the category uh, right well uh, that's all from me thanks and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nitin gupta from mk global please go ahead yeah thanks a lot for the opportunity I uh, just wanted to check, like, would you be able to share revenue split across brands? Um, so I need to be don't share the revenue split across brands. Okay, okay, that's perfectly fine. Uh, just wanted to check another question is with respect to the BPC category. Uh, sort of, we have a, a fair presence across most categories. So, in terms of any new category, like uh, how the thought will evolve, like how you want to spread across categories, will we be open to get into uh, categories like oral care, where we see uh, healthy margin profile, or getting into a home care category ahead? So, um, uh, BPC is the core category that we have uh, we have chosen to focus on uh, from medium term perspective. That's the category where we are building. organizational strengths beat in terms of understanding the consumer and their skin hair needs far better and as well as in strengthening our r&d in um, marketing physics uh, as as a as a company uh, now within that um, we, um, we there is there are still um, you know some sub categories where we are not present in we would we would probably validate them in future but outside of that categories like home care you know, is not something that we would look at you know, um even category like oral care in the short term we are not um, looking at but from medium term perspective even if you look at that category you would look at it um, from an angle of beauty you know, um which is finally your smile is, is what makes you beautiful so if that sort of you know, that that that's how we would look at possibly the category in long term but not in short thank you and the last question with respect to the baby products so like so we have put out an excellent ad yesterday so just wanted to know like how is the premium for baby products um so baby product category continues to uh, grow well for us and um and continues to uh, be a strong driver of equity for uh, uh for mama earth is a brand that's the uh, that's the brand in which baby care uh, is present and uh, for mama earth the thing is that you should be not on okay. can you repeat the last line um for mama earth baby care continues to have a salient for about 10% okay okay thanks a lot thanks
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Varun Gadal and Raman. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was on the margin uh, expansion of 150 basis points that you talked about for FY25. Uh, could you walk us through, uh, you know, the key levers for this? Are we, you know, how are you looking at gross margins? Would they remain stable at 70 percent? Uh, in FY24, we saw employee costs were up, uh, you know, just three, four percent. You know, uh, and ANP was up about 25 percent. Uh, so. Do you think employee cost will continue to grow very modestly even in FY25? And any incremental thoughts on uh, you know what kind of growth uh, you anticipate in ANP given uh, you know the new uh, uh, brand investments that you plan to do? Uh, that's the first question. Thank you. Yeah, Latika. So, like we mentioned, um, the combination. Um, of all of these levers is what would help us get to that 150 basis point improvement. And if, uh, then there is slight improvement which we expect in gross margins as well, um, because given um, younger brands uh, are going faster, younger brands have actually got uh, better gross margins of height. Um, and that makes change uh, as well as uh, is, is sort of you know, contributing uh, towards uh, GP and GM expansion. And, um, then the second lever, of course, is ANP. And um, while uh, we do continue to invest strongly in our brands, and, um, but as the brand scales, and we have clearly seen um, that the percentage ANP on that brand sort of continues to uh, come down. We have seen that now in Mama and in Double. We expect to see that um, in, in other brands as well. And so that's the second unlock. And, and of course, the third unlock is. Uh, um, leverage you know, where we expect we can down the complex and other costs you know, uh, to grow slower than where the company is growing. So I think combination of those three will help us get that. Okay. Uh, the second bit was just clarifying on you know your underlying volume growth uh, definition. Think you are referring to tonnage growth or you are referring to number of units growth, and uh, also so we're in, in, yeah. sorry. Sorry, complete your question. Sorry, Latika. Please go on. The, the, the other thing I wanted to check was, are you adjusting this for mix? So, uh, so our uh, you know UVG uh, basically is tonnage growth on uh, previous base lease periods uh, realization. So it it uh, sort of calculates uh, constant turnover based on previous years uh, realization, which is the typical uh, way of Calculating UVG, and hence the price is taken off its pure volume. And it will go in tonnage terms. It takes care of the mixes. And it takes care of the mixes. Yeah. All right. And uh, the last bit was, uh, you know, any flavor on, uh, you know, how the overall uh, revenue mix is uh, now trending, uh, you know, in terms of key segments, uh, skin, hair, uh, color cosmetics, uh, you know, You've talked about how sunscreens are growing quite fast, but and any enough flavor on uh, you know how the shampoos uh, you know in, in the overall revenue mix are trending amongst key segments. So, Latika skin continues to be the largest segment for the company. Um, more than 60% uh, of the um, volume of the number of value for the company is coming from skin now, uh, and it is also the fastest growing segment for us. Uh, followed by uh, hair, uh, followed by color, followed by baby, and followed by body. Uh, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Shade from Girik Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Chintan Shet, may I request that you unmute your line from your side, please? Uh, Mr. Chintan, may I request you to unmute your line? Your line has been unmuted. 
hi uh, thank you for the opportunity hope i am audible yes sir please go ahead yeah thank you uh, congratulations team for uh, for this uh, great set of numbers a uh, couple of question one is on on the uh, mamad growth uh, you mentioned uh, the euro monitor data the secondary one uh, growing at 21% for the uh, for mamad brand um, but ours uh, for the full year looks like a single digit or 9 9 to 10% uh, growth the gap you explained uh, partly because of uh, of the uh, distribution change or uh but if we if we just look at uh, the the expectation wise uh, whether the brand uh, can grow at a uh, you know high 20 20 uh, 18 20% growth rate or uh, do you feel there is there is the online softness also uh, coming through the base is also hitting which is uh, reflecting in the uh, softer number for us so chintan as we have talked about i think from our next uh, uh three perspective we are looking at a uh digit value growth or mama as a brand and but uh, at a company level uh we uh, we plan to grow at 20% plus uh, um uh, value growth factor you know the value you know brand can grow faster and of course mama has a large base attached to it is uh, uh it is uh, like you mentioned amongst the top 15 gpc brands and if you actually remove the So brands from that it is actually one of the top five B2C brands in the country, um, ahead of uh, um, brands which have existed for almost six plus years. And uh, then there is um, the B2C is that uh, this is how expecting brand to grow over the years, right? But the company um, grows via actions in different uh, categories. Right. Okay. And uh, the second was on the acquisition, um, the R&D side. um there was uh, there was some concern you know that uh, the way we were uh, launching new products uh, the timeline and the speed at which we were launching new products uh, the the timeline for uh, doing a effective uh, um, what would say the quality or uh, quality based testing uh, whether this this help us to kind of uh, overcome that uh, uh, aspect uh for launching new products because there were certain uh, you know media concerns on the way we were launching new products at a at a at a quick uh, succession the the issue was that uh, whether we we are kind of uh, um, you know overpassing uh, certain uh, quality checks uh, or the regulatory checks not not the regulatory checks per se but uh, but on the quality aspect that uh, it, it it is not uh, given a due required uh, timeline for a for to complete that quality check so uh, is this is this would like to clarify and uh, um i i absolutely do not uh, 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 we are paranoid about quality in this company mm-hmm. uh, we started as a baby care company we used to make products for our own babies and we, um and we we still continue to test everything in our cell as well and um every launch in our company follows the full quality protocol and testing uh, which includes all kind of nbl uh, lab testing it includes dermatology testing for sensitivity and it includes our internal lab testing and in fact we are one of the very few companies in um mm-hmm. which even today it does batch level production batch level external lab testing and so last year we have done more than 20000 uh, tests on each of our batches that we have manufactured in this quality so okay. um, and then that is an area where we are already very very strong and we are very cautious of and um, there is a reason why consumers love our products there is a reason why we can able to scale um you know uh, these brands in such a competitive environment and, and that mm-hmm. is our focus on um, for quality and uh, this acquisition allows us more knowledge and more ability into commercial uh, formulations which the team has done and the uh, ability to get into the newer categories which we might not have had earlier and uh, um when i get into more depth and uh, in further improving our products and uh, but quality as an area has continued to remain very high priority area and will continue to remain 
So do we have a, uh, you know, a quantitative targets uh, for this accretion that uh, this number of particular products which we will likely or categories which will likely to, uh, you know, get into uh, uh, with the help of uh, the already set up, uh, you know, R&D set up over the next couple of years? Um, so, you know, the overall, the acquisition is supposed to help us deliver our goals and, um, uh, you know, that we have set for ourselves. And, uh, uh, and hence, there is no different target. And, uh, the innovation target that we have in the company, uh, this acquisition is supposed to further um, ensure uh, that those targets sort of get met and, uh, um, because, of, uh, because of the capabilities that we acquire. Sure. And last question on this, uh, the Saudi uh, distributor uh, thing. Um, we already released the press, press note uh, a couple of big days back. Uh, the, uh, what will be the timeline or how, how should one uh, uh, track this? We are going to the upper uh, upper court. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, hi. So, so we have uh, 30 days uh, to file an appeal. Okay. And uh, given that, you know, the judgment that was passed by one of our systems for the years and did not really pick up the merits, okay, so mm -hmm. we're going ahead and uh, filing the appeal. And I think we're very confident of, uh, you know, reversing this at the next court uh, of appeal. Sure. Okay. So next hearing will be, or next appeal will be in... In, 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 in the current quarter? No, it will be filed within 30 days and then the code will give a date. After. Okay, okay. So it will take time. Okay, great. Uh, all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Purohit from Ilara. Please go ahead. Yeah, and thank you for the opportunity, sir. There's two questions. One, uh, you highlighted uh, your initiatives on direct reach uh, in uh, top 10 cities. So one um, um, query I had is uh, more on uh, a customer uh, thought process. I mean, why would a consumer uh, move from an uh, online to an offline uh, in these top 10 cities, which are already have a good access in terms of internet and uh, now quick commerce as well? Uh, just your thoughts on that. Um, this is the first question. If you could. So, uh, uh, so our, our view is that um, consumers in all of India, of course, in, in top 10 cities as well, and, um, prefer to buy uh, in their channels of choice. I mean, there are consumers, um, let's say in Delhi, who prefer to buy on uh, Amazon or a D2C or a commerce. And then there are consumers who still prefer to uh, take their shopping machine uh, to a Dmart or a Lime store or to a GP store nearby, and um, because um, you know of their of their uh, uh, you know, higher trust in that uh, channel, and uh, because of uh, um, their their wanting to discover and feel the products before they buy. And uh, um, overall, um, as we as we see today, still. Um, almost 90% of the category sales continue to be in the offline channels. And, uh, um, and that consumer is now looking for our brands. And, uh, and hence, our role will be to provide the brands at, at the channel of choice where they want to buy us. And, uh, um, and hence, it's, it's, uh, it's a mix of different consumers, even in these cities, and, uh, uh, that we're trying to solve. So these would be assuming to be a unique kind of consumers rather than the existing cohort. Is that what assumption is? Yes. Okay. And uh, second uh, is more on to understand uh, your clarification uh, with respect to your comment on active based products. And you said that uh, uh, largely these are uh, dominant in the online channel, right? Uh, most much of the market is on the online. When you say Dharma and uh, Doctor said, as a market as such, not just this brand yes. brands, but uh, so in yes, that context, they, they uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry please. please. So no, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so please complete the question. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I, I just so if yes, uh, then uh, then the uh, thought process was this that. Uh, 
I wanted to know is that uh, if if that's the case, then uh, which are the brands which you expected to bring it offline? Because now you will have a distribution base and a direct reach, yeah. and that would require a throughput uh, 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 to be much more viable. Uh, would it that uh, kind of uh, give you a thought of entering into some of the uh, mass categories as well, and not just restricted to mass stage and the above segment? Um, so, um, firstly, yes, uh, the, the market for these products from a uh, from a uh, direct to consumer perspective largely lies in online. And uh, some of these products and categories have existed, but uh, in the past as well. But they have largely existed in the pharma uh, kind of channels uh, recommended by dermatologists, but now it's becoming direct to consumer, uh, and that market largely lies in online. And, uh, so, my ability to take it offline. And, uh, um, I think we're already with Mama Earth uh, present in uh, the right kind of stores where um, you know, some of these um, uh, categories and brands will also go, right? especially pharma and voluntary channels. Right? Um, and we will uh, ride on that distribution right? that we have already built and to take these brands to those channels as well. Sure. And just the point on uh, the viability of this direct reach which should be good enough for us to uh, not, uh, or we would have a thought of entering into a mass or some other thing. Yeah, no, we, we don't have uh, such things. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Hi team. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, an observation and, uh, and and a clarification. Uh, 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 you know, congratulations to the team. Uh, you know, for the UVG metric. Uh, you know, starting this quarter. Do vividly recall the conversation last time. Uh, it's an absolutely excellent metric to follow. Uh, uh, you know, good luck to you. Uh, secondly, on the offline journey, uh, you know, Vaidan and team. Uh, you know, look, you are a young company started extremely well in online, and uh, uh, you know, in fact, uh, started off even better in offline. Uh, you know, for, for example, when I think about, let's say, demand forecasting, uh, right, you are starting on a fresh slate and you have done and executed largely, I would say, impeccably. So just, just help us through your last 12, 24 months of your offline journey. Uh, you know, what are the learnings, what are the hits and misses, and how do you see those templates, uh, you know, let's say, helping you in the next, let's say, few years. Thank you. Thanks, Manoj. Uh, you're right. We did discuss the uh, need for a UVG metric, and uh, we've uh, we've worked on it pieces at feedback. And um, on your uh, on your second point, I think um, uh, firstly uh, the the realization uh, has been around how we are a very data oriented company, and, uh, where we like to take almost every uh, decision based on a set of clear data. Um, and uh, hence the realization was that if we want to execute well in offline, we need to have almost as much uh, data as we collect in online and to be able to make even more um, you know, relevant decisions. And, um, and in that light, and the kind of partners that we need uh, should be the ones who understand and, um, the uh, the power of executing uh, the, the tools that we provide, uh, as well as um, in terms of the uh, sales team that we work with, and should also appreciate and execute basically that process. And uh, um, I think that was one of the biggest learnings. And, uh, um, and uh, we've, we've uh, in the last year, and uh, we from um, the right um, team leaders' perspective, bringing in the right leadership. And, uh, and then, um, you know, from that down, building the right kind of team which has this process and data orientation um, is, is uh, an action that we have taken. And, um, uh, second realization, like I talked about, and, uh, has been about the fact that the more um, direct control you have over your distribution, and, uh, and the lesser the layer exists between the um, company and uh, retail. And, uh, uh, the better uh, is the quality of in-store execution, which of course leads to better shares, and, uh, um, and that's something that we have uh, implemented, uh, um, you know, in the in the project that we talked about. I think we'll continue to focus on that in FY25 as well. I think the third big learning for us has been 
um, you know, working with modern trade accounts. And modern trade, um, like DMART and Reliance, continue to grow really well uh, in the country in its time presence. And, uh, um, and uh, um, last year, we have actually been able to uh, engage very deeply with our modern trade customers, and whereby now um, we have uh, relationships um, where um, you know we we collaboratively work on newer opportunities in terms of propositions, tax sizes, categories, and uh, uh, which we think uh, is going to allow us to take better shares in the modern trade environment as well. And, uh, um, so I think those would be the key learnings that we have had, and, and we we continue to learn. Though I don't think the learning journey. Uh, has stopped. In fact, as a team, every quarter, um, almost top 50 vendors for the company uh, go and uh, uh, meet distributors, do market visits uh, together, and then we come back and do a degree from the same to further enhance our learning. So uh, we'll continue to be on that current journey. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for a very detailed response. Just a two quick follow-ups here. Uh, one, uh, you know, just around 200,000, uh, uh, you know, let's say outlet reach in GP currently uh, uh, in, in offline. Uh, realistically, what's the TAM uh, which you have for the current portfolio? I do understand that, uh, you know, every end uh, outlet may not be the same, uh, you know, throughput. Uh, but just from a market now simple narrative template, uh, you know, what should be the TAM in terms of the offline outlets, let's say, Tetris uh, Paribus, which you should be having today, subject to execution? So for two categories, uh, one is face wash and shampoo so, and, uh, is where we capture this in, uh, through Macy Mason, uh, where we know we are in about 50% value-weighted uh, outlets and for shampoo and face wash. And, um, um, and, and hence, probably for those categories, we can say uh, that these contribute to 50% of the category sales according to Mason. And, but even in these um, you know, uh, stores, and, uh, um, almost 150,000 of this 200,000 is in indirect distribution. And uh, we've realized when you go from indirect to direct, and, um, you're, you're able to make a significant impact and your SAH sort of, you know, improves significantly. And, uh, so that's the second flavor to me from that. Hope, hope that sort of... Yeah, yeah. No, fairly clear. Very, very clear. And lastly, but in, uh, a, a while back, uh, you know, uh, I do recall the conversation about the opportunity for you uh, from your lens, the uh, low unit price pack uh, opportunity, uh, which I don't think you've really dialed up as yet. Uh, so where are you uh, uh, at this point in time in terms of the LUP opportunity, thought process, and execution? Manoj, um, I must clarify that our LUP is largely actually categories LUP. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, because uh, each example will not get into um, sachets uh, yeah. as a company. Um, given we have uh, aspirational brands, and, and we would like to uh, maintain that aspiration. And, um, but we want to get into smaller packs so that put down price, like you rightly said, and um, for our for our brands becomes more. And, uh, and in line with that, um, this year. Um, our objective will be uh, to scale up our 99 rupee price point uh, packs in shampoo and face washes and, um, and, and take that direct distribution uh, higher. And, uh, um, and uh, probably next year, we'll look at an uh, uh, even lower price point of the 49.50 levels and, uh, and scale that up. Very clear. Thank you so much and uh, good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the follow-up opportunity. A couple of uh, you know interesting questions. Uh, the first one was so possible to share the ARR for uh, you know uh, Aqualogica and Dr. Shade. Uh, your 500 crores for Derma Company in Q4. Um, Latika, um, as in when the brands hit uh, um, a newer, interesting milestone, and we will keep uh, coming and, and celebrating that with you. And, uh, the last we disclosed that uh, both the brands were um, in the uh, 150, 180 crore kind of uh, era. And, uh, of course, they have grown from there on. And, um, um, but uh, possibly soon we will come up with uh, 
uh, you know, as, as a hit and miss one. Okay. Uh, the second one was on other income in the quarter. Uh, this was about 19 crores. Uh, you know, in the previous quarter it was about 11 crores. Uh, could you let us know, you know, what is the expected run rate on this number? This seems higher in this particular quarter. Well, I think so. You know, this is largely the impact of IPO proceeds uh, for the full quarter. We obviously, uh, you know, we've started utilizing it to a certain extent, but not uh, completely. So, uh, from a run rate perspective, uh, give or take, uh, you know, few crores. That this is the quarterly run rate that we're Okay, and. Uh the last bit was on, uh, you know, your distribution uh, channels. Uh, you said one third of the business is, uh, you know, offline. Uh, could you help us with, uh, you know, how is uh, the salience of modern trade, if it's possible to give some color on, you know, uh, or what's the salience of that in your revenue mix today? And any uh, any thoughts on or any anything that you want to share on how you're participating in the quick commerce uh, channel? Thank you. Uh, so, Latika, from a uh, monetary perspective, uh, within um, offline, um, our modern trade in institutional business would be about 40%, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, um, GT would be about 60%. Good um, uh, commerce is, is growing um, very fast for us. And, um, it, uh, it, of course, relative to um, uh, some of the other, uh, you know, e-com platforms which are uh, which are much larger. And uh, in terms of contribution, um, as of some, you know, uh, it has already entered uh, top five. You know, but in terms of growth, you know, uh, quick commerce is, is growing uh, much faster compared to other commerce platforms. Thank you. And is this channel, uh, you know, uh, from a profitability perspective, uh, you know, uh, how does it stack up versus other e-commerce, uh, you know, the mainstream e-commerce channel for you? Is it a better so channel? So relative to mainstream e-commerce uh, channels, it's more popular. Right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Doshi from Kodak. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, team. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, there's a follow-up on, uh, you know, uh, TDC, Ecologica, and Dr. Shades. What would be the offline contribution for all these three brands put together today? I know it's insignificant. And, uh, you know, currently your reach for Mamart is about 188,000 outlets. Uh, what percentage of the outlets, uh, you know, either on a weighted average basis or, you know, on an absolute numeric basis, do you think are essentially ready to onboard these brands. Thanks, Jay. Um, so uh, you're right. Currently, uh, between Yamako, Atlantica, and Dr. Shed's uh, contribution will actually be in low single digits for offline. Um, this is the year FI25 where uh, we're taking, especially Yamako, which has reached a certain scale and is now seeing demand and, um, into the offline space. Uh, our first port of call um, will be combination of modern trade and um, chemist uh, channel stores. And, uh, um, and uh, we would actually um, want to grow um, you know, uh, incrementally and, uh, uh, by first putting in the right set of imagery stores, by right, seeing the traction there, then adding um, you know, another set of stores and, uh, um, and, and uh, making sure that wherever we put the brand. Uh, the brand is sort of moving out. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, plans are there, and uh, um, we hope uh, uh, this year uh, for Dermaco, uh, and uh, we are able to take the contribution of offline to high single digits, uh, and then come on from there. Second is how do you internally track uh, you know the repeat of takes and is there a you know qualitative or a quantitative sort of color you can give on some of your three four year old ranges such as onion range, uh, uptan, uh, vitamin C. How have how have do these ranges performed uh, versus uh, you know the Mamark brand 
you know, in FY24 or over the last two years. So are you seeing uh, far healthier growth in some of those core ranges and the slowdown that you've seen for, uh, you know, the flagship brand is largely because of the long tail sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know, lower repeat of takes there. So how, how do you sort of internally assess this and if you can, you know, help us understand it better? Sure. Um, so Jay, um, uh, given our, we are there expanding, especially for Mama, right, the growth is now coming from offline and modern trade where we're expanding. And, um, and offline and GD and modern trade as, um, uh, you know, channels where uh, you're able to execute a few SQs well right, rather than execute long chain. And, um, and hence our hero SQs like Open Face Wash and Onion Champions and, um, had actually uh, grown uh, in high double digits uh, in value last year. And, um, and they continue to uh, do well in revival fees uh, in, in high double digits. These are all sort of you know, ranges and hero SQs which are, uh, which are present in, uh, and are driven in the GTM one trade. Uh, ecosystem. We continue to see strong growth on those. Uh, Understood. And the final one, uh, you know, uh, innovations contributed 18% to full year, you know, growth uh, in FY24, and overall growth was about 30% odd. So how will this construct, you know, uh, sort of be over the next one or two years when you're guiding 20% plus growth? How much of that increment, uh, you know, growth you expect to come from, you know, innovations that will launch during the course of year, and how much will be from your existing portfolio? Um, Jay, firstly, one must also understand that, uh, uh, you know, in this same uh, growth, there is also the younger brands uh, which are included, right? And for um, younger brands, for example, if something is two year old or one year old, uh, it's still in the stage of range building, right? It's still in the stage where a lot of innovation drives that growth. And, um, so that is also included in this. And, um, but from a uh, future perspective, and, um, if you're looking at it, when it's in Canada, and, uh, we will continue uh, to look at at least 50%, 40 to 50% of that and being driven um, by innovation. Sure. Thank you so much and wish you the very best for FY25. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you so much, everyone, for asking these questions and your best wishes. Thank you. On behalf of Kotak Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.